Hello there, I'm Linus from Gravity. In this session, we'll be looking at MCP or the Model Context Protocol. We'll look at some of the challenges that existed before MCP that MCP looks to address. We'll then introduce what MCP is and specifically how it solves those problems. And then we'll look at the concept of an MCP gateway, which is something that you have to take into consideration using when you're running MCP in production. So let's just look through an AI agent and the concept of an agent. So an AI agent is an autonomous system. It could be running in Langchain or True AI or Bedrock or Vertex and whatever agent framework or platform you might be using. Now the unique thing with an AI agent is that it typically uses one or more LLMs, large language models, to kind of power its responses, to give its uh, plan for actions that it needs to maintain in, in the rest of the world. So an AI agent uh, goes back and forth with one or more LLM systems to figure out how to achieve a task, how to respond back to a user. Now, before MCP, an AI agent at some level of maturity typically needs to speak to some sort of system. Maybe it needs to speak to APIs, and maybe sometimes it would need to speak to databases. It might be Kafka topics, might be knowledge articles, a huge amount of systems that an AI agent very likely we need to converse with to provide the right data for the LLM and to actually complete actions on behalf of the LLM, maybe booking a flight ticket or submitting a ticket or something like this. Now, when you're building out an AI agent, there's two challenges for this. One, it means that if you're providing the LLM data and giving the LLM options to what of these actions and tools to invoke, the LLM might use things like, or need be given things like the open API specification, or potentially, I don't know, an SQL statement that it can run on behalf of the agent. Different types of ways to explain different tools and syntaxes available for the LLM. Now this sometimes is a bit confusing for the LLM and it's maybe not optimized for this sort of descriptive uh, methods. The open API specification, for example, wasn't purposely built for machines and AI agent systems. It was mainly built for humans to understand how to de describe APIs. The second challenge is that if you imagine that the LLM managed to take a decision, oh, let's say we want to use this particular API or this particular database, it would be up to the AI agent developer to somehow figure out how to invoke those particular systems, how to invoke the API, how to invoke the database with the input parameters uh, coming from the LLM and how to respond back to LLM with the output from those systems in a way that makes sense for LLM. So it might be requiring someone to develop a REST API integration, maybe using an API client within the agent and maybe implementing something like JDBC connectivity to interact with that database system. So it gives a lot of complexity and time to build and maintain these systems. And it's not necessarily something that an LLM intuitively easily understands and, and comprehends in terms of what it can do and how to, to utilize it. Okay, so let's put a check mark in before MCP. So we've looked at the challenges around AI agent developers, LLMs face before MCP came into the mix. So what's with MCP a better way to handle this situation, to give a consistent way for LLMs to understand the tools at its disposal and for the agent developer not having to care about how to make tool selection and inputs and outputs to the LLM become implemented against the tools that you need to work with? Well, first of all, the AI agent implements something called MCP clients. So MCP clients live within what is called the MCP host, which is effectively where your agent uh, and its MCP client code, code lives. So let's say that we have one MCP client here and one MCP client here running locally within the agent architecture. Now, let's just create a imaginary line here. Now I say imaginary because MCP client can use um, talk to MCP servers that either live remotely outside of the machine or within the machine. So there might be a network, so a boundary here. Regardless of there being a boundary or not, you have the concept of MCP servers. So let's just paint out here, MCP servers. 
those might not be developed necessarily by the developer that is developing the MCP client and the host of the AI agent. So let's say we have MCP server, two MCP servers over here. Now, one of those MCP servers might be implemented to be able to work with REST APIs. And the other one might be specialized in working with databases. So the MCP server implementation focuses on the implementation towards particular protocols and systems and how to translate that to incoming or, or receiving communication through the MCP client. So let's just go ahead and draw communication here between the MCP client and the MCP server. So this is over something called the MCP protocol. So the MCP protocol, technically speaking, is either if it's a local environment that the user is running is, is, is via something called SDO, which is a local sort of network interface, or is HTTP or service and events, depending if it's a synchronous or asynchronous sort of communication pattern. So the MCP client here doesn't have to care or know about the actual underlying systems. Is it that API, is it the database? All it needs to do is to ask the MCP servers for what is called tool definitions. So that's the first thing that happened. The MCP clients here, they basically ask the MCP servers for tool definitions. So tool definitions include things like what are the inputs, what are the outputs that that system expects? What is it that I actually do? What sort of authentication do those MCP servers potentially need? And those are effectively given through the agent back to the LLM. And then the LLM looks at the different tools to its disposal, what they can do, uh, what the context is around them, and then it makes a, a selection through the agent. And that is effectively called a tool selection. So when a tool selection is made, it's now up to the AI agent to actually make that invocation. So now the MCP client is invoking the MCP server, which is then invoking potentially an API or maybe potentially a database. So that solves the two challenges for AI agents. It makes it much more simple for the LLM, which now has a consistent tool definition that it can look at and understand in a much more native way than it would with an open API specification or a SQL statement, for example. And it doesn't have to care about what is the implementation. It's a consistent definition regardless of what the underlying system is. And the agent developer doesn't have to care about implementing direct calls to different systems and, and applications and worrying about how to translate inputs and outputs between PROMs and LLM to those systems. And that's how SMCP solves those challenges. Okay, great. So that's how MCP solves those challenges. Let's put a check mark in that box. Now, implementing MCP on enterprise scale, however, brings a few other challenges. You have to manage this communication and observability and, and security just as if it was other systems. But now you have this new protocol of MCP that you need to ensure is governed and protected as per your needs. So one solution to solve for this problem is to introduce a layer between the client and the server, which is what is called an MCP gateway. So an MCP gateway is a system that understands the MCP protocol and can kind of act as a middleman as per the communication between the client side and the server side, whether that is locally using SDO or whether it's using a remote MCP server, like in this situation on the left-hand side here, um, with something like HTTP and service and event. So the MCP client simply then goes, points to the MCP gateway as its MCP server. So the MCP clients here are viewing this MCP gateway as a, um, as a MCP server. And then MCP gateway is routing to the various upstream MCP server. So why would someone do this? What are the actual things this solves for? Well, let's list them out a little bit. So first and foremost, it actually allows the, let's put a checkbox here. So it allows the MCP client and host to use just one single URL. It doesn't have to worry about 
hundreds of potential MCP servers and their locations and their authentication and, and how to get access to them. You just have to care about the MCP gateway. So the MCP gateway kind of hosts, uh, so acts as a sort of a router here. The second thing it allows for is security. So AI security in general is very, very complicated. And it doesn't get easier if you have to implement different sort of security for different types of MCP servers with different standards. So security is very, very important. So an MCP gateway solves for that. It's allowing you to have unified and consistent authentication and authorization, maybe with your favorite identity provider. It allows you to have fine-grained uh, access control to determine exactly what user is allowed to access what. It can also really help with tool access. So tool, if we just refresh our memory here, rep is represented by the different systems that is translated by the MCP server. So multiple MCP servers will have multiple tools. Putting them through one gateway allows the single entry point to have a view of all the tool definitions. And then it allows you to control exactly what tools should be accessed by what users and what AI agents. So granular tool access is another very interesting thing that the, the having this brings. Another thing is things like rate limiting or quotas. The basic ability to protect your MCP servers or your third-party MCP servers from abuse or for overreach, because the reality is that an AI agent system is autonomous. And again, that means that not only might it go back and forth to the LM multiple times, it might go and invoke multiple tools uh, from different MCP servers in an uncontrollable, non-deterministic way. So securing and making sure that different MCP servers do not get overloaded or overused from a security or a cost perspective is very important. And having an MCP gateway in front of that will help with that. Another thing it helps with is observability. So I spoke about cost a little bit. And cost, as I'm sure you're watching this, know from LLMs, is not going to decrease. The LLM usage will increase a lot. And ensuring that you have chargeback mechanisms and an overall kind of uh, operations around your AI cost is very essential. And that is going to be the same for MCP because MCP servers are using underlying APIs and MCP servers themselves are going to be a call center. So uh, having one single entry point of MCP traffic allows you to get that central observability, understanding performance, understanding response times, understanding potential uh, breaches, or just wanting to understand what tool gets used the most. That's an advantage of having an MCP gateway in front of upstream MCP servers. Last but not least, I would put data filtering and data masking. So it might be great to, as we spoke about, have ways to control what tools are allowed to be used by what users through this single entry point. But what if you need to be more granular than that? Maybe you need to ensure that particular information in your enterprise, whether it sits in a database or whether it sits in an API or a Kafka topic or wherever it sits and is exposed by an MCP server, that those data points have a single access point through the MCP gateway allows you to go in and granularly, maybe on a tool level, define what type of data fields and attributes should be accessed or maybe filtered or masked uh, before it's retrieved back by the agent. And again, having an MCP a gateway in front of the MCP servers allows you that sort of centralized control and governance. So that's pretty much it. We've now looked at the challenges that existed before MCP came into the calculation. We've looked at exactly how MCP solves for that by abstracting away the complexity of implementing tool invocation for agent developers and allowing LLMs to have a consistent way for understanding what tools are able uh, are, are accessible to use. We looked at the reasons why an MCP gateway might be very important to get you that sort of central routing, orchestration, rate limiting, observability, and analytics on top of your existing MCP servers. This was Linus from Gravity. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.